ci siamo. Cominciano ad arrivare ad entrare anche gli spettatori. Ok, welcome everyone. Hello. Uh, thank you very much for being here and for joining uh, this webinar with us today. My name is Marta Rosio and I work for the U uh, European Association for Local Democracy. And today we are here uh, within the European Green Week 2021 whose main thematic is uh, uh, zero pollution. And we have uh, uh, organized this webinar, this, uh, this event within this important week, uh, within the Light Beware project. The uh, title of the event is uh, Natural Resources Management and Pollution Reduction, Sharing Best practice, Practices at Local, National, and International level. And the main objective of the webinar is to uh, talk about uh, sustainable uh, management of natural resources and how through the sustainable management of natural resources, we can contribute to uh, the reduction of uh, the pollution, uh, both uh, at the urban and rural level. Today with us, uh, besides the uh, Beware project, now I'm going to introduce you uh, briefly. We also have uh, um, other two representatives of other two live projects. Life Prepare and Life Soil for Life, and uh, uh, also uh, the um, Society di Acqua. So I will go through very briefly the agenda so that we have an overview of uh, uh, the main thematics that we are going to tackle today. So first of all, um, Francesco Bettella from Padua University is going to um, bring us to a virtual uh, trip uh, to uh, the nature-based solutions that have been realized in the Alto Vicentino area in the northeast of, uh, of Italy. Then we are going to uh, give the floor to Paolo Ronco, head of the Center for Water Resources of Veneto uh, Rive uh, Research Center of the Aqua Spa, that is going to talk to us about the uh, contamination risk and water safety plans. So we are going to face the thematic of the pollution from uh, the point of view of water. Then we are going to um, pass to the soil uh, point of view. So we are going to give the floor to Damiano Di Simine and uh, Caterina Benvenuto. Uh, Damiano Di Simine, Di Simine is uh, the scientific responsible of uh, the Soil for Life project and uh, Caterina Benvenuto is from Legambiente Lombardia, partner of the project. And they are going to talk to us about uh, uh, the soil as a generator of ecosystem services. And then we are going to give the floor to Life Prepare, uh, specifically to uh, Giulia Righi from uh, Emilia Romagna region. Uh, and uh, uh, we are going to uh, face the topic of pollution from the air. Uh, natural resources. So uh, the, um, the webinar is very rich. We are going to face uh, an important thematic uh, um, starting from uh, the uh, sustainable management of natural resources. So without uh, uh, taking too much time, I'm going to uh, briefly introduce uh, the Life Beware project, which is a project that uh, uh, is uh, uh, co-funded by the Life Program of the European Union. And uh, as you know, the Life Program of the European Union is the program who uh, is uh, financing actions uh, uh, for uh, climate action and environmental sustainability. Uh, the project started in uh, 2018 and is going to end next year. And uh, uh, as uh, the majority of the Life projects, uh, the territorial focus is very specific. And in this case is the uh, Veneto region in Northeastern Italy and specifically uh, the uh, area of uh, uh, the Alto Vicentino. Here you can see who are the partners. As you see, uh, the partners are uh, Italian. We have uh, the uh, Padua University, Alta Pemora Veneta, Veneto Agricoltura, and two municipalities of the Alto Vicentino area, Sant'Orso, who is the coordinator of the project, and Marano Vicentino. And then, of course, ALDA, uh, the European Association for Local Democracy, is the international partner of the consortium. And we 
taking care of the networking and replicability uh, part of, of the project. So which are the issues that are tackled by the project? First of all, uh, the increase of heavy rainfall intensity in the last decades, which uh, leads to frequent floods, uh, landslides and falls and ex extreme weather events. And the Alto Vicentini is an area that is affected by uh, this kind of uh, meteorological events. Then, of course, the thematic of uh, the soil consumption and the ground sealing. So the increase of soil consumption in the last years, uh, as we will see later, Veneto region, region is um, uh, the uh, region who has the highest rate of soil consumption uh, from uh, uh, last report. Uh, then, of course, another issue that is tackled is the lack of uh, adequate resources for local public administrations. That's why uh, two of the partners of the project are, are local municipalities, and one of the aspects that are uh, tackled by the project is also the um, public policy aspect. So how it is possible to introduce uh, at the territorial level public policies that have a real effect on uh, climate change adaptation and uh, flood risk mitigation. So the main objective of the project is to implement a strategy for uh, adaptation to climate change and flood risk, both in urban and rural areas, uh, through the involvement of local communities. A very important part of the project is dedicated to the involvement of citizens. So as I was saying before, uh, Veneto is the Italian region with the highest soil ceiling rate in 2019. This is a, um, an overview of the geographical focus of, of the project in the pre-Alps area, so with the uh, geographical, morphological and territorial char characteristics which are very specific and have their own peculiarities and issues. Um, and like Beware uh, tries to tackle uh, uh, the main issue, which is uh, the flood risk through different actions. Uh, the, um, core of the project or uh, like part of the core of the project is dedicated to uh, the widespread of natural water retention measures or nature-based solutions, both in urban and rural areas. So the project has implemented seven pilot natural water retention measures that we are going to analyze later on with uh, uh, Francesco Bettella. Uh, then, uh, as I was saying before, an important part of the project is dedicated to the public policy uh, part. So we uh, with the project we uh, developed a participatory process with 20 municipalities to include in the building regulations uh, codes and territorial plans uh, a part dedicated to the introduction of natural water retention measures as a strategy to mitigate the, the flood risk then uh, uh, of course we have all this part dedicated to the involvement of citizens uh, uh, with whom we have realized a participatory process to uh, elaborate uh, a climate adaptation plan of uh, uh, the uh, in the alto vicentino uh, we have realized training for professionals uh, education and dissemination activities with the schools uh, of of the area and of course a very important part of the project is dedicated to the net networking and the replicability at the European and international uh, level and also with other uh, projects uh, and that's why we are also here today with two other live projects. So uh, the um, approach of the project is the, a multi-stakeholder approach. We are going to and we are involving uh, uh, different stakeholders in our um, uh, network, uh, starting from uh, uh, citizens, uh, going through uh, uh, the educational community, involving students and young people with uh, interactive activities in the territory, uh, local and technical actors and uh, decision makers. And uh, we, are, we are doing that also creating a, a community of interest, a network uh, that is now composed by more than 90 uh, stakeholders belonging to different sectors, the public, private, sector, uh, civil society organizations. Um, and uh, uh, for the moment, we are, um, we are present with this network in 10 countries in, in Europe. And uh, uh, of course, I extend the invitation to all the uh, participants if they are interested in writing us to know more about uh, which kind of activities we are proposing to the community of interest. So uh, I think that uh, um, that's it for the moment. Of course, if you are interested in knowing more information, these are our channels. 
Facebook, Twitter, uh, website uh, uh, where you can also subscribe to the newsletter and the uh, email. I thank you very much for, for, for your attention. So now I uh, go back to uh, the agenda and uh, I, I leave the floor to Francesco Vettella for a, an overview of the nature-based solutions that have been realized with the Beware project. So Francesco, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, Marta, and uh, good morning to all the people that are following the webinar. As Marta said, I'm Francesco Bettella, and I work as a research assistant at the University of Padova. I'm a hydrologist, and I work in, at the Beware project, providing support mainly in the hydraulic design of interventions and the, the, the monetary actions. I'm here today to take you to visit the natural-based solutions realized within the project Beware. So virtually grab your backpacks and come with us to Italy. Yes, because the interventions has been realized in the northeast of Italy, in the Veneto region, and more precisely in the northern part of the Vicenza province, in the municipalities of Sant'Orso here and Marano Vicentino. We are in a foothill areas, uh, area where the annual precipitation are about 1,700 millimeters, and where the runoff concentration can pose significant hazard to the population. Here we realized the seven natural based solutions, uh, six of, of them in uh, urban area, the red dots here, and one in a rural area here, the blue one. Uh, all the realized interventions can be classified as natural water retention measures that are natural based solutions that aim to safeguard and enhance the water storage potential of landscape and soil using natural processes such as uh, water accumulation and filtration. As a consequence, the main aim of the structures uh, is the flooding risk mitigation, but they can provide also other multiple benefits, mainly thanks to the use of vegetation. Some of these benefits are, are listed uh, here, and considering the, to the, topic of, of the topic of the Green Week, uh, we cannot fail to mention the reduction of the water pollution. In fact, uh, thanks to the water filtration and in some cases, uh, thanks to phytodepuration, natural water retention measure can actually reduce pollutants such, uh, such as oil, sediments, fertilizers, and litter. Pollutants that are usually not managed by traditional pipe drainage. Uh, going into detail, here is the list of the seven realized natural water retention measures that include rain gardens, waves, bioretention areas, detention basins, uh, rainwater harvesting, uh, dry wells, and pervious pavement. Uh, some of these interventions are monitored in order to evaluate their effect in flood risk uh, mitigation and in the removal of the water pollutants. Uh, about the qualitative monitoring, uh, the chemical analysis uh, of the water samples are uh, carried out in collaboration with the research center VIVE and uh, Viaqua, the company that, that manages uh, the water service for the most part of Vicenza, Vicenza province. And in the next presentation, Paolo Ronco will show you some of uh, the activities uh, carried out by, by this company in order to reduce the contamination of the water. In the project website, you can find the first annual monitoring report uh, with the first results of the uh, quantitative monitoring. The pollutant monitoring has been started uh, just one month ago, so you will find the results of this analysis in the next year report. So let's go to visit some of uh, the interventions. Uh, the first one I show you uh, is the rain garden of uh, Liberta Square, the number one here. Uh, the rain garden has been realized in order to manage the water runoff produced by the impervious area of the parking lot of the, of the square. Uh, the area of the rain garden is about uh, 60 uh, square meters against uh, the almost 800 uh, square meter of the parking lot. Uh, here you can see the functioning of the rain garden during a rainfall event. This is the device that allows to measure the inlet, inlet runoff. This is a rectangular wire. 
And as you can see, uh, the print selection can play also an important role in improving the aesthetic value of the area. And here we are in the other side of the rain garden and into this pit is located the overflow and the epithometric pipe to take samples of the outlet water. The next intervention is located very close to the first one in the Grumo Hill area here. This is the Grumo Hill area, the Grumo Hill, and the problem here was the rainfall runoff that moved down to the slope and uh, caused flooding to these houses at the bottom of the hill. Uh, to solve the problem, we realized as well, this one here, <coughs> this, is, this is the houses that uh, suffer of flooding problem. So as well, that intercept the water runoff and uh, through a pipe, this one, collect the water into a bioretention area here. Uh, the bioretention has been realized the, in the other side of the hill because uh, the subsoil characteristic was more uh, favorable to infiltration. And here you can see the slope of the hill and uh, the realized swale here. This swale reduced the drainage area of the hill slope base uh, of about 75%. At the end of the swale, here you can see the device that measure the amount of, of the collected water. And this is the instrument that, con that con constantly measure uh, this amount of water. <coughs> this is the bioretention area on the other side of a hill. As you can see, uh, it is composed by two subsequent basins. When the first one is filled by water, the water run run off in the second uh, in the second basin through this little channel. And here that there is also a, an overflow if necessary. Uh, the third intervention that are going that we are going to visit is the one realized in the parking lot of the graveyard of uh, Santorso here. Uh, you can see the parking lot before the intervention. As you can see from these pictures during heavy rainfalls, flooding events occur in this area. And the intervention has been realized in order to mitigate this flooding risk. The problem of flooding in this location is mainly due to the wide area, about five hectares, that drain the water <coughs> uh, to the parking lot here. This is the parking lot and this is the graveyard and in blue you can see the flooding area. So to solve the problem, we use different types of natural water tension measure, an infiltration trench and the pervious pavement here in order to intercept, accumulate and infiltrate the water runoff coming from the upslope area. And then the two uh, green areas of the parking lot has been converted into rain gardens in order to manage the water runoff produced by the impervious area of the parking lot. Here is the infiltration trench and the, the pervious pavement realized by a local company, the Favra Uno. And here, the first rain garden, you can see uh, here, this is the first rain garden. And here, uh, you can see that the storm water runoff can flow through this uh, crab cut into the first rain garden. Then the water move to the second rain garden here. <clears throat> and this is the ponding water that leaves less than 24 hours after it has stopped draining. Uh, this is the final overflow of the system. And this is the device to monitor uh, the inlet water. The first rain garden and the second. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. The last intervention that I would like to show you is the detention basin that you see behind me. The basin uh, is about uh, 2,500 cubic meters and has been built in order to slow down the water runoff and mitigate the flooding risk of the residential area. Another aim is to uh, guarantee during the summer period the irrigation water to the agricultural activities of the area. 
The basin is surrounded by a strip of vegetation, as you can see, typical of the Venetian lowland area, in order to increase the biodiversity, as you can see in the last short video of the day here. <laughs> This is the device that we use to measure the flow level inside the lake. And the short visit is finished for today. So thank you for your attention. If you are interested about the project and the design of intervention, you can find some material in our website. And we are planning also uh, some trainings both in Italian and in English for the next video. So if you are interested about it, uh, subscribe to the newsletter and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Francesco, for this very interesting presentation and images. I think that uh, they were very um, interesting. So I invite uh, the, the participants, if uh, some of you has questions or curiosities, uh, to write in the chat or in the Facebook chat also from the ones that are following us in the live on Facebook. So now I would like to leave the floor to Paolo Ronco from uh, uh, the Aqua and uh, the River Center that is going to uh, talk about uh, the contamination risk and the water safety plans. So, Paolo, when you want, the floor is yours. Thanks. Thanks a lot for the invitation. I would like to thank the organizer for, the, for inviting us uh, to this, uh, this event to disseminate and share a bit with you uh, our experience in, uh, uh, in the contamination risk uh, assessment and, uh, and mitigation plan. I'm going to share you one presentation. Uh, Right, so uh, the case is uh, more or less located uh, in the same uh, context, geographical context that Francisco already introduced. So in the upper uh, uh, plain of Veneto, north of the city, north of, the city of Vicenza, that is exactly in the foothills of the uh, Asociano di Asiago. And, uh, the Centro Vive is, uh, is uh, a new project uh, that is uh, promoted by two water utilities, that is uh, the Aqua and the Etra. These two water utilities share a bit the, uh, the general geography of the uh, province di Vicenza, but also a bit the province di Padova, a bit southern, and share more or less the same uh, uh, geophysical and geohydrological uh, context. Uh, the Central Riva is, uh, is supposed to be a reference point for the monitoring and study of the water sources of this stadium, so the Batignone and Brenta and Watershed, uh, to support decision making processes of the water utilities, uh, but also correlated institutions. So these two water utilities, the Aqua and the Eta, are fully public. So the owners are the municipalities of these, uh, of these provinces. And uh, to support uh, the overall, the mission is to support the transition from the emergency to preventive risk approaches in water sources. So shifting a bit from the reaction mode to the prevention. Uh, what does the uh, Centro River do? Uh, first of all, uh, we are dealing with the collection, analysis, and processing of data about the hydrological, geological, and structural context of the uh, underground flow cluster. So we are mainly dealing with the groundwater, but not only. Uh, we assess the risk for drinking water uh, and the impact of the hazard events, existing and potential hazards. Effects coming from the industrial, artisanal, agro technical origin to the local water supply system. So we apply the approach promoted and called the water safety plan that later I'm going to We also do apply the research and development and visualization of ethical scientific projects, uh, such as the life as the life to be aware, but also other life projects, also age 2020 and so forth. 
We also do training and finish activities to institutions, companies, and other stakeholders in this process. So the question now is to what is exactly a work safety plan? Because it is a bit a new uh, approach, new mode that probably most of the people don't know, know yet. So the water safety plan is a global risk assessment and with global I mean not worldwide, but it's global because it approaches all the steps of the water supply system. Right? And the aiming is to assess the risk uh, from the collection to the end user to so to ensure the protection of the water resources and the reduction of the potential other events that in the water. So all the phases from the withdrawal, the treatment, storage, monitoring, and distribution and supply to end users are careful assessed to you know to compute, assess, and possibly mitigate the risk. So the legal and scientific basis are drawn from the uh, suggestions uh, from the Water Health, uh, the World Health uh, Organization that first. Uh, in 2004 and then in 2011, divulgate this uh, uh, addendum to you know promote this approach uh, among the water uh, utilities and water safety in the world. It has been then uh, translated in the Italian uh, context, uh, also from uh, an European experience, uh, European uh, directive, and then translated into the you know, official legal. Uh, uh, body of the Italian legislation in 2017. Since that moment, uh, we all the water utility are supposed to implement and uh, uh, assess the, uh, the water safety plan uh, within a certain period of time. So I think that in between uh, one to ten years, uh, we're going to see a lot of water safety plans coming up. From the what we did is overall in Italy, but also in, uh, in Europe. Also, the new, I didn't mention that uh, in, in the slides, but I will zoom in uh, in, uh, in this picture the fact that the new request of the drinking water directive explicitly mentioned the approach of the water safety plan. So, the risk is now embedded within the official, within the European legislation. And will be compulsory for the future steps in terms of monitoring and the investment in the water overall. So the steps of the water safety plan are I try to summarize them in three, four steps. So the first one is the mapping and the characterization of the hazard the pressure service system, such as industry, landfill, farms, livestock, fuel deposit. Uh, pipelines, roads, contaminated sites, etc., etc., etc. So the list is very long. So in this picture, you can see just one example of the location of some uh, uh, livestock. In the, so the blue spot are livestock uh, in just one particular municipality, uh, and uh, also the industrial site in San Diego that is close to the Arctic River. Uh, just to give an overall idea of the impact that this uh, uh, infrastructure, this what we call hazard threshold point, can pose to the to the capital one and capital two uh, for holes that down there that are the main sources of water producing. Uh, not only the at this scale, but also now on a wider scale, we do also mapping and monitoring of contamination pools. So, Taking into consideration also the historical ones. Uh, in this uh, in map, you can see uh, the most important contamination flows that have been mapped so far in the Chensa uh, upper plane, starting uh, since the late 60s, when you know the industrialization was uh, very, very strong, and also the well, Coupled with the fact that the environmental protection was not so, let's say, mature enough to, uh, you know, mitigate the impact of the industrial and artisanal production. Uh, this is the plume uh, of the one of the most dramatic contamination events, the deepest contamination uh, 
uh, bloom uh, that originated, originated in the West Valley of the Genta province uh, in the Tristino municipality. There was uh, the world, I say the world because now the factory has been closed, but it was a factory manufacturing, so producing the uh, first variety components uh, for the textile and salary industry. And this, uh, unfortunately, has uh, been uh, the main source of contamination for more than 40 years uh, with a flu that did reach the distance of 35 kilometers south, south uh, and also 18 kilometers uh, to the east direction close to the city of Vicenza. Uh, These are the main figures of this contamination that is probably the largest in Europe about this factor so far. So you can see more than 1,050. Uh, 150,000 inhabitants have been directly exposed uh, to the PFAS contamination through the same people. So, uh, the mapping and monitoring uh, uh, exercise is also consists in practical uh, monitoring uh, uh, campaign that probably we're going to start uh, the next few weeks. We are going to map and monitor more than 45 points. Uh, with uh, almost 300 parameters, including PFAS, of course, from ethical pesticides, chemicals, uh, microbial plastic, and so forth. So, a very wide blend of uh, possible contaminants that will help us to you know, assess the current situation of the quality of the underground resources. So, underground water resources. The risk assessment is the step two. So after the monitoring and the assessment of the hazard, we do the assessment of the risk by combining the probability of the particular intent with the impact in terms of uh, impact on the human health. Uh, these metrics help us to assess the level of risk in a scale from 0 to 25, and scoring of risk supports, supports the strategic planning of intervention. So it's crucial this exercise because uh, it physically and quantitatively assessment, the quantitative assessment of the risk uh, is really the uh, crucial point uh, to uh, you know prioritize uh, the intervention and the investment. Not only the, the assessment, not only the risk calculation, but also the mitigation plan is uh, one of the main steps of the World Health Plan. So, the planning of implementation of different actions, such as the installation of monitoring five meters that are supposed to intercept the contaminants before the water reaches the borehole for uh, water supply. With a certain effort in terms of time. For instance, these uh, five centimeters are installed in a curve in a capture floor of uh, one year before in terms of either one of the process or the other Also, the installation of the water treatment plants, such as the GHA filter, is part of the uh, mitigation action. Of course, for the case of PFAS, for instance, the uh, historical contamination, uh, so PFAS contamination uh, has dramatically impacted one main borehole, one main production field in uh, close to the Nigro, and this has led to the installation of huge filters uh, with a huge investment for, for the water utility and for the, for the citizens, of course. Uh, just to give an example, one other another uh, mitigation measure is the interconnection. So the, the water distribution system is less vulnerable when it's connected to the others, and when they can rely on multiple sources of, of water, of course. So the Lima contamination, the, the, the Lima is the old name of the factory, the same one that the unfortunately contaminated with the PFAS in the sense that contaminated with the pentachloride, the BSP, more or less the same valley, but more on the east side. At that time, uh, the authority decided to interconnect the, the, the communities that have been impacted with the uh, water distribution system of Vicenza, you know, saving this community from the, the, the contamination of people that has been, uh, you know, discovered only recently in 2013. 
that uh, also led to the huge investment for the interconnection of the community that has been impacted by this uh, uh, contamination with different interconnections in terms of water distribution system, but also with the, you know, the, uh, the drilling of new boreholes in the safe area up in the valley of Ecuador and the, the connection with other water distribution systems. So the more the, the distribution system is interconnected, the less it is vulnerable to this uh, contamination. So uh, my presentation is uh, it's finished. I just wanted to give you a bit of the flavor of the, of the work that we are currently doing for the, uh, for the water safety plan implementation in the area is, uh, you know, as you can see, it's a, it's a quite wide exercise that starts from the assessment of the risk, so assessment of the hazard, so tactical from a geographical point of view, but also from a, you know, industry and production point of view, uh, and then to the computational risk, coming with the investment plan for the mitigation of risk, so the installation of site meter, the installation of filters, the interconnection, and also the option of, you know, uh, abandoning water resources that is contaminated with no chance to remediate is also one of the options. Thanks again for the attention. Of course, I remain available for your questions and uh, for your Thank you very much, uh, Paolo, for this very interesting presentation and for the very um, complete and deep analysis that you provided us with. Um, so if I uh, go back to tell you that if you have questions or uh, curiosities, you can write in the chat. And I now leave the floor to uh, Damiano Di Simine from uh, the Soil for Life project is going to talk to us about the soil as generator of ecosystem services and also um, about the path towards the European policy framework for the con conservation and restoration of healthy soil. So, so Damiano, when you want, uh, you have the, the, the floor. Well, thank you, thank you. Now I share my presentation. Mm, I hope everything is good. Uh, uh, we can see it, yeah. Okay. Well, I will speak. Uh, oh, what's happening? Okay. I will speak about uh, uh, not, not the, the projects the Soil for Life, of which uh, uh, Legambiente is the lead partner, but also of the background of the, this project uh, that is a uh, uh, um, a project funded within the LIFE program, uh, within the sector of governance and the environmental information, with a quite wide partnership uh, with many Italian agencies uh, like, such as uh, ISPRA and the CREA and the uh, AirSoft, that is the uh, Lombardy Region uh, uh, Agency for Agriculture and Forests. And there is also a part, uh, university partner that is Polytechnic of Milan. And uh, in a farmer organization such as uh, CIA, CIA, uh, and also uh, the municipality of Rome and uh, civil society organizations such as Legambiente, but also the coordinating committee for international voluntary service and uh, the Croatian Zelina Istra. Uh, well, uh, the, uh, the horizon of the project is the is within the, the agenda for sustainable development of the United Nations, uh, and uh, in particular, uh, the, the, the reference to the to the, to the charge to the target of land degradation in the world to attain within uh, 2030. Uh, that is a very uh, challenging uh, target of the. Uh, sustainable development agenda, uh, and that's uh, within uh, it, it is the, 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 the background of the of the project. Uh, within the, the project, we have uh, managed a lot of action uh, towards uh, uh, actors of uh, of soil management, in particular in, in Italy. Uh, we have uh, translated and. Uh, 
uh, translated the uh, voluntary guidelines for the sustainable management of soil that were, were adopted by the United Nations in uh, 2016. Uh, and uh, we've, uh, together with the farmer associations, uh, we deployed a, a lot of uh, work to, to translate in action and to uh, make training to the farmers uh, based on, the, on these principles and also uh, actions uh, towards uh, the uh, soil users, in particular the land and soil professionals, such as uh, uh, the urban planners, uh, the architects, uh, the geologists, uh, agronomists, and so on, uh, in an action that was supported by the Polytechnic and uh, ISPRA with, uh, together with uh, Le Gambiente. So uh, a lot of uh, uh, information with uh, a high number of participants uh, for uh, sharing uh, the uh, awareness and the technical uh, competences on soil, on sustainable soil management. Uh, the background is uh, that uh, uh, we recognize the soil as an essential and not, not renewable natural resource uh, as the largest terrestrial pool for of carbon uh, and of uh, food, uh, and uh, in a nutshell, we say that uh, the, we speak about the ecosystem services of soil, uh, but also the recognition of uh, the soil degradation that is uh, uh, re very relevant. Uh, some 33 percent of global soils are moderately or strongly degraded, uh, and the outlook are not positive. Uh, because of climate change and the spreading of aggressive agriculture practices and management throughout the world, but also Europe as its own part of the responsibility. The two prioritary targets of challenges of the Soil for Life projects are reduce and stop soil sealing and increase the organic matter content of agricultural soil. Uh, in particular, uh, it, 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 the trend, the, the, the framework of, uh, uh, of soil conditioning in Europe is uh, worrying. Uh, uh, these, are, these are the more recently published uh, uh, data from uh, uh, European Agen uh, Environmental Agency. Uh, in, the la uh, in the last decades, uh, the uh, the growth of artificial surfaces is, is, is uh, slowing because of, of economic crisis, but uh, land use change uh, affecting uh, soil uh, with uh, relevant intact soil with relevant uh, uh, role for uh, the, the, the content of uh, organic uh, uh, matter and, uh, and uh, biodiversity are. Uh, uh, Worrying uh, in, uh, uh, as a whole, land, de land degradation uh, is not reducing its rate uh, throughout Europe. We are we are we are not on the on the on the on the, tar on the target of uh, the land degradation uh, neutral world to, uh, to 2030, and this is something that. Uh, of which uh, the European institutions are fully, uh, fully aware, uh, with uh, extreme features that, such as desertification affecting uh, uh, Mediterranean uh, regions of, of Europe, and uh, uh, also Italy, uh, also this, the southern part of Italy, in particular Sicily, uh, with uh, Worrying processes of desertification, desertification are uh, recorded by uh, European agencies such as JLC. Uh, uh, strictly linked to the uh, soil, so to the uh, organic matter of soil, that is the uh, preservation of soil biodiversity. Uh, in for its uh, acknowledged role in the provision of uh, uh, 
ecosystem service of a wide number of existing services and also for its uh, role in the uh, climatic action. Uh, in, uh, also, this is a, a worrying outlook for uh, European uh, soil. Uh, many soils, uh, many agricultural soils are uh, threatened by the uh, loss of biodiversity linked with the uh, loss of organic matter uh, and uh, this is a threat of which we are uh, recently aware uh, what what we are may, uh, working with uh, with the project, project site for life is increase awareness about uh, the role of uh, organic of soil biodiversity of soil uh, to, to make it Common heritage of, of people and, uh, uh, and technician uh, and uh, workers uh, of, of who manage uh, soil uh, in their activity. To be fully aware that the soil is not uh, just a substrate, but is a, a very complex uh, uh, environment and ecosystem. Uh, so, we adopting the, the, the new uh, language. Uh, from a European uh, institution, we, 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 just, we don't speak just of soil, but we speak about healthy soil as a, uh, as a, uh, as our motto for when we speak about uh, the need of preserving soil. It is, it is not enough to preserve soil from land take, from uh, sealing, uh, but we have to preserve the, the, the a healthy state uh, of uh, our soil, preserving the, its uh, stru structural and chemical uh, uh, features of, uh, of soil, keeping also in account that uh, chemical contamination is a, a, a high rele highly relevant uh, uh, threat. Uh, Europeans, uh, uh, the European Environmental Agency uh, speak about uh, 2.8 million of sites in Europe potentially contaminated but uh, from a point, point sources uh, contamination uh, and uh, only a few part of these sites are have been characterized and all are reclaimed so this is a, a high priority for uh, environment environmental policies in Europe in the next few years uh, uh, and also the diffused chemical contamination is a, is a primary uh, uh, worry. Also, if uh, uh, many things are changed, uh, if, you, if we think to metals, metals uh, such as uh, lead and mercury, we know, we know that the contamination from these metals uh, is decreasing because of active policies to reduce uh, the contamination from these metals, but New uh, or not new, but uh, war, increasing worry are uh, linked to other metals such as uh, cadmium uh, that is increasing in Mediterranean area uh, soils because of the content of cadmium in, in, phosphor, in uh, phosphate fertilizer and, uh, and, and also in co for copper, copper uh, used in agriculture but also in. Uh, in, in uh, feeds, uh, in particular for swine uh, breeding. Uh, another uh, topic that is very relevant to our work that we are deploying together with the uh, Lombardy Region Agency for Forests and Agriculture is the uh, excess of nutrients. Uh, we very often speak of, uh, of this problem for waters, but it is a problem also for soils with uh, important uh, consequences. Uh, the excess of nitrogen, in particular, in, in European uh, farmlands, uh, are, um, are very worrying because of the consequences of uh, the uh, eutrophication of soils in, term, in terms of acidification. Uh, and also of uh, emission in water uh, 
and in air, excess of nitrogen are linked with emissions of nitro, uh, nitrous oxide uh, and also of ammonia, that is a, uh, an emerging, emerging uh, topic uh, for, of which probably uh, the, the, the life prepare this uh, project is particularly aware and maybe uh, 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 the, the project Search for Life is also involved in advocacy action uh, towards uh, the, uh, the development of uh, European policy and uh, legislation uh, about soil at the European level. Uh, we remember that uh, in Europe is, exists a, a soil thematic strategy that was released in 2006 uh, and that, that included a proposal for a, for a soil directive. Uh, uh, the, the, the soil thematic strategy of uh, 2006 uh, uh, in, an, uh, in, in an actual language uh, uh, recognized that soil is a provider of ecosystem services uh, and uh, this uh, implies the, the need for soil protection that has us to prevail, prevail over sectoral uh, proprietary regulation. Uh, this was the uh, commitments of European Commission to, uh, some 15 years ago, but uh, the, the efforts to, uh, to, to have a European directive on soils was uh, banished from the opposition of the member states, in particular five member states in, uh, opposed to the to, 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 to the European legislative uh, neck, uh, framework and uh, that therefore the, the Commission withdraw uh, the, withdraw the, uh, the, the proposal on 2014 uh, what is changed from uh, 2014 is that at the international level many agents many documents, many efforts have been made uh, and published to uh, increase awareness about land and soil degradation starting from the SDGs but also by the publication of IPBES or end of uh, uh, IPCC on the, the strong interlinks with, between uh, climate, biodiversity and uh, land degradation. Uh, so something changed in the, in the, on the global uh, uh, awareness about soil uh, and we hope uh, and we are working actively uh, uh, for, uh, for, for attain a change in, in the political uh, in the European uh, floor and there are some very uh, relevant facts recent facts that uh, happened uh, in the last uh, 12, 12 months. Uh, first of all, uh, the proposal of, our, of a new soil strategy uh, that have, uh, has to be published within the next few weeks. Uh, and, and the new soil strategy is healthy soil for healthy life uh, and is part of the EU Green Deal. Uh, and uh, a very uh, relevant fact happened in April, in April uh, two months ago. You, the European Parliament approved a motion for a solution uh, that uh, commits the European Commission to provide a text for a new soil European legisl legislative framework. So, uh, we, we, with our project, uh, we uh, made a lot of work uh, of uh, advocacy and of uh, 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 joining the forces for, for, of the civil society in support of, uh, of these this very relevant steps. We are, we are aware that uh, in, the, in, the, in uh, the member states we may have uh, uh, opposition to, uh, to, to, to a, a political a legislative framework on soils, so the next steps will be very crucial for have a soil protection in Europe, and the, the next steps will be uh, will uh, work uh, to, to to make a, to, to 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 
to particular in, in, in fact of the uh, of, of the institution to support uh, a, a new uh, season for uh, protection of soil in uh, in Europe. Uh, and so, thanks for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Damiano, for this interesting overview. And I think that it could be very interesting also to read the roadmap once that it's out. So uh, it's, um, it's a very interesting uh, general perspective that you provided us and uh, an insight. So uh, I invite again everyone to ask questions also in the Q&A uh, session in Zoom uh, to our speakers. and. Uh, uh, so we did uh, the part about water, we did the part about soil, and now it's the time to uh, listen to Life Prepare, uh, Giulia Righi, who is going to talk to us about the uh, integrated project Life Prepare to reduce air pollution in the Po Valley. So uh, we are in another uh, geographical area. So Giulia, when you want, the, I leave you the word. You have the microphone off. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. And now we can also see the screen. So, yeah. Okay. I'm Giulia Righi. I'm from Emilia Romagna region, and uh, I am an officer about the um, Emilia Romagna region. And uh, I work for a prepare project that is uh, an, a European project that uh, aims to uh, reduce the air pollutants. So um, there is uh, um, a global uh, um, leading and um, that is a global threat. So uh, that's this leading to uh, big impacts on human health and ecosystems. And uh, air pollution is currently the most important environmental risk to human health. It is perceived that uh, as one of uh, the biggest environment concern for Europeans after the climate changes. So here, if you want, uh, there is a, a video that introduces uh, in pills some uh, information about the um, air pollution. And uh, here there is uh, the situation about the Po Basin that is a very um, biggest big problem because uh, the Po Basin is a very complex area in terms of uh, orographic and uh, climatic uh, weather condition because in the no uh, to the north we have Alps so mountains that close uh, the basin and uh, they. Um, the mountains go to the uh, west part and uh, at uh, the opposite side we have also mountains but the, they are Apennines and uh, at the east side we have the sea but the sea is the Adriatic Sea that is a very closed sea. Uh, in this area is also critical because uh, here um, lives the uh, sorry here lives a very um, an, a large number of people and uh, there is also uh, characterized by uh, a large number of uh, industries and um, um, a large number of uh, um, um, sorry um, I do not know I do not uh, um, Remember the correct name in English, uh, just a moment, please. Um, livestock. Livestock, and there are also many activities concerning the agriculture. And uh, this is a very big problem because uh, uh, the pollutants of air uh, can't go away, and so um, they um, remain here, remain over. The, uh, this area that is very populated and uh, and then uh, there is a lot of number of people that are um, 
uh, that is exposed to uh, these pollutants. And uh, these pollutants are very, um, are very um, dangerous for our health. So uh, this is prepared in numbers. Uh, we have 7 million of, uh, of budget and um, uh, there are 10 millions that are EU funds about the life program. Uh, we, Emilia-Romagna Emilia region are, uh, is uh, the uh, coordinator beneficiaries and uh, there are also 17 beneficiaries. We have six regions, uh, Lombardia, Piemonte, Veneto uh, and Friuli and a part of Trentino Alto Adige because we work with the, the autonomous province of Trento and uh, the autonomous province of uh, Bolzano is uh, a stakeholder. So we have also uh, seven environmental agency. We have uh, ARPAE, that is Emilia Romagna agency, ARPA Lombardia, ARPA Piemonte, ARPA Veneto, ARPA Valle d'Aosta and ARPA Friuli. We have also a beneficiary that is uh, Slovenia and uh, participated to our project with uh, his uh, environmental agency, ARSO. Uh, we have also like beneficiaries uh, uh, three metropoli metropolitan cities, that is uh, uh, the metropolitan city of Bologna, Torino and Milano, and we have also two private bodies, Arter, that uh, uh, collaborate with us, uh, um, first of all, uh, uh, of the uh, communication pillar, and then uh, FLA, that is for Nazionale Lombardia per l'Ambiente. Uh, let me show you a little video about prepare, does it work? I think no, so maybe here. Just a moment. So if it does it work, okay. Okay, here is the video. We still cannot see it, Giulia. Okay, just a moment. I think Let that you have, show... to, uh, you have to change the screen settings because uh, we just... Ah, okay, okay. Point. You're right, you're right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, can you see something? No, I, I think that you have to stop sharing the screen and then going back to share the screen, selecting the video. Okay, now I, I, yes. I did it. I, I did um, it. Now, yes, it was just a question of time. Okay. Okay. I hope it works because on my PC it works. Okay. If it doesn't work, it's not a problem. I will let you the link uh, in the chat. Do you see something? No? I see just the, the screen for the moment with the, the logo of the project. Okay. Uh, if you want, I can show you the video. Maybe, yeah. The one on the website is correct. Yes. This one? Okay, yes. I, I think there is the sound off. Yeah, ah, sorry. But yes. Thank you, Francesco. Okay, perfect. No, this is in, in Italian, I, I think. I'm sorry. There is <laughs> another in English. You, you have to select English uh, one, yes. Okay. 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 Mm, this one. Yes. Uh, we can hear the the audio.
do, do you hear something about the video? No, I think that. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I I go I go uh, straight. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, we can send. I the link. We will send the link in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will send the link in the chat. Okay. okay great. Okay. Okay, I continue the presentation. Okay, let me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, the principal aims to, uh, of Prepire is to support the implementation of air quality plans. Uh, um, we, okay, the, the story about Prepare is that in uh, two, um, 2006, uh, 05, the administration of the uh, depot basin um, signed an, an agreement um, and uh, then uh, this agreement uh, became uh, uh, a protocol in, in 2019 during the uh, Clean Air Dialogue. So uh, other aims uh, of Prepair is to support the full implementation of the air quality plans about the all um, regions of the Po Basin and also to support the measure of the Padano Basin agreements. And uh, is to establish a permanent data sharing infrastructure for air quality monitoring and assessment of the implementation of the measures in the project area. And is to evaluate and reduce the transport of pollutants across the North Adriatic. Adriatic. And then establish a permanent governance platform made up of air quality administration, environmental agency and complementary fund management authorities and stakeholders. So uh, it is characterized by uh, five principal pillars, that is agriculture, biomass, transport, energy efficiency, emission and air quality. Also, we have action related to communication, networking and management and governance. Uh, we have uh, many complementary action and uh, we have more than one million of budget. Uh, Complementary funding uh, derives from uh, uh, e EAFRD and ERDF and from regional and national funds. And uh, here uh, are the script, uh, uh, some of uh, our results. We had we have more than 60 conference courses, workshops, stakeholders consultation, and other events that uh, involved more uh, 4,000 public officers, professionals, craftsmen, students, uh, and, uh, and so on. We, did, uh, we involved uh, more than uh, 250 experts and technicals. Uh, we uh, have more than, five, uh, than 20 project meetings and several thematic meetings. And we have more than uh, 20 uh, technical reports, handbooks, database, web platforms, uh, web application, and um, e-learning models. Uh, one of the uh, big results that uh, Prepare uh, achieved um, is uh, uh, the report COVID. We have three report COVID and uh, uh, Prepare with uh, the environmental agency uh, studied the effect of uh, the measure of the lockdown on the air quality and on the emission. Um, there are uh, three reports, you can find it on uh, our website. And if you want, we, uh, we can send you by uh, email. So uh, these are the uh, biomass actions. We have three biomass actions. Uh, because uh, also from the biomass derives uh, many, many um, 
air pollutants, uh, principally uh, the PM10 derives from biomass. So we have concrete action that um, aims to uh, reduce the uh, principally uh, the uh, PM10 derives from the burning of biomass uh, in our house. Uh, here there are leaflets that contains uh, 10 tips for correct management of stoves and fireplaces. And uh, the link is a link of YouTube, uh, or better, the thematic channel of the fire of YouTube. And uh, there is a short video uh, that show the few but essential rules for the correct management of biomass plants. This is uh, the booklet that uh, give uh, information about uh, uh, the um, effects on human health. And um, so in substantially is, uh, is used as uh, in-depth support and technical scientific uh, if, um, booklet. So we have transport uh, actions we have six tra transport actions. By, uh, by the transport, we have uh, NOx uh, that are um, the nitrogen dioxide that are very, very important uh, air pollution emissions. And uh, we, have to, uh, we have action that promotes the cycling mobility. Uh, we have uh, the action that wants to uh, conversion uh, a bus from a diesel bus to electric bus. We have also action that support electric mobility. For example, we uh, are now um, we have now courses for um, mobility manager. And we did, uh, for example, a study about the action C1 uh, that uh, um, are related to uh, short range freight logistic, uh, also in urban and also in uh, extra urban areas. Uh, here, there are the uh, guidelines of uh, the uh, cycle of mobility. And we did uh, uh, the regional guidelines approved with the GR 691 uh, 2019s. And uh, for this uh, cycling mobility, we organized the training of public officers and advisors, but uh, the, um, the courses were open also to technical, like architects, engineers, and so on. Uh, this is another video about the logistics. There is a study of the short range logistics. And here we have the agriculture action that aim to promotion the application of urea based fertilizer in low emission mode because uh, the uh, urea contains NH3 ammonia that is uh, a very pollutant for our um, atmosphere because uh, um, it um, transforms uh, in powder and uh, this is uh, the very important uh, pollution. Uh, we have uh, also the action C5 implementation of the common model for the assessments of cases and odor. Uh, from in, uh, intensive uh, cattle, pigs, and poultry farming. And so this is uh, uh, the wind tunnel about uh, the action C4. Uh, wind tunnel, uh, it consists in um, uh, test the, uh, the emission about NH3. So uh, we have a little area uh, fertilized by um, urea fertilizer and uh, with uh, these instruments uh, we could uh, um, so we can uh, assess uh, how uh, the um, NH3 works uh, in the soil and uh, how many uh, in NH3 emission derives from this kind of uh, fertilization. So <clears throat> also uh, with the funds of free payer, 
we uh, give to farmers and to the agriculture uh, and to the agriculture some good practice uh, to avoid the uh, NH3 emission and other um, unhealthy uh, pollutants. Here there is a, a calculator that is online, but tools. We um, create this, uh, um, this calculator in collaboration with CRPA. And um, BAT tool um, is uh, evaluate um, how many emissions derives from intensive cattle, pigs, and poultry farmers. And also, we uh, could evaluate also odor that comes from uh, this uh, farming. So we did uh, uh, a survey. Um, this is Valutal uh, Area, and uh, it is the, the survey that uh, present us to understand which is the perception by citizen in the Po Valley about the air quality. There is um, uh, um, a lot of uh, question, and the uh, citizen uh, has to uh, give the answer and the perception of the um, the air quality. The first edition of, was realized in November 2018, uh, and then we uh, we will do another edition, a new edition at the end of the pro the project, and uh, at the, the uh, 2023 to evaluate uh, the evolution of perception. The evolution because, uh, uh, as you see. Um, between few min uh, after few minutes, um, the uh, air quality uh, with the, the measure plans uh, uh, by the air quality plans uh, uh, and um, by um, measure of prepare uh, is uh, um, is um, better than a uh, few uh, years ago. Um, here there are uh, pillar energy pillar energy efficiency actions. Oh, this is in Italian. Sorry, um, we had uh, uh, training and support uh, services to industries aimed at improving energy efficiency. So uh, we uh, organized a tra um, training course to um, give a solution to improving. Uh, the um, energy plans of the industries. Uh, we organized the, the courses for uh, technicians and uh, um, administrators of uh, condominium uh, to, sorry, to uh, requalification uh, the uh, energy plans in uh, houses and uh, in condominiums. Uh, so if you hear, uh, so uh, as you hear in, in the slide, you see uh, the front of the house before, and then uh, you can see the front after, but after the requalification uh, works. And uh, we have also the action that support the local authorities for energy saving initiative in public buildings and for the enhancement of the UPP. And about that, we have uh, uh, we development uh, a virtual info point to support the public uh, official. We have an info point uh, in uh, in our in our sites. And uh, about GPP, we realized the handbooks, uh, e-learning modules, and workshop uh, about uh, the bu buildings and also about the energy efficiency. And the last one uh, that is uh, on working is um, uh, handbooks about the uh, public green. Uh, that is. Um, for example, uh, uh, best practice to um, enhance the green uh, in uh, cities. And 
This is uh, the report COVID, as I said before. The report COVID uh, uh, take into consideration the meteorolo meteorological condition, the air quality data, and uh, how have been the emission modified during uh, the lockdown, uh, the causes of variation of the emission, and uh, how have these changes influenced the air quality. Uh, this is uh, an emission data set. As you can see, uh, the Po Valley is a very critical area that uh, is influenced by uh, transport in the, in the second uh, uh, image, but uh, the first one is uh, uh, the image that represents the um, uh, pollution derived from uh, um, biomass, burning biomass. Here, there are emissions uh, that, that are set that are uh, in the first column about the figure about PM10 that are related to uh, 2013 uh, without any uh, scenarios, without any co-basing agreement, without any air quality plans and without the measure uh, of prepare. So uh, we can see uh, the major pollutants um, derives from the micro sector four, no micro sector seconds, sorry, that is uh, biomass combustion and industrial, that is uh, uh, biomass burning, uh, pri private biomass burning. And uh, the second column about PM10 is uh, uh, the scenarios clay about uh, 2025 and uh, the more the most uh, pollutants is the same is come from biomass the burning of biomass and but you can see that uh, if we um, uh, addition to uh, these scenarios air quality plants and uh, uh, the poor basin measure agreement uh, the um, air quality is um, is better than without them. And then we have uh, uh, a better air quality if uh, uh, we, um, we add to uh, the uh, air quality plan or and to the basin agreement, the prepaid action. The second one, as you can see, has uh, uh, the most uh, uh, pollutant derives from uh, and OX that is uh, um, traffic derives from a vehicle circulation. This is uh, the web platform for uh, the data set. We have uh, the regular assessment for the high quality of the Po Basin, and we have the data sharing uh, infrastructure and the AQ models. The, uh, those ones are realized by the collaboration of the uh, all entire basin environment agency and uh, in final we have the environmental education we have training and education courses uh, also for students and also for teachers and uh, we collaborate with the other um, courses with other uh, projects that uh, have the networking uh, to consent to uh, students and teachers uh, to uh, training uh, about the um, air quality themes. So thank you for the attention. Uh, here are our contacts. If you have uh, some uh, uh, question, please uh, write uh, them in chat. And uh, if you need some documents, uh, please write us uh, by writing an email. Thank you very much, uh, Giulia. Uh, for for this very interesting presentation about the prepare project and the um, focus uh, integrated approach uh, implemented by by the project uh, in uh, in the Po Valley. So I think that we uh, are perfectly on time. I don't see any question. Just someone saying uh, congratulations and thank you for the interesting presentation. So. Uh, I think that we can uh, uh, close uh, the session here. I um, remind you that uh, 
we are going live on Facebook, so the uh, recording is going to be kept uh, on uh, on Facebook, and you can contact us uh, through our uh, Facebook page and website uh, for any other curiosity. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, I don't know if uh, uh, someone else wants to say something. If not, we can close the the webinar. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone, and uh, have, uh, have a great uh, afternoon. Thank you very much for being thank here you. with us. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. Bye-bye.